The gamma function is one of the most advanced functions in all of mathematics. And you can see here that gamma, as a function of x, is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 multiplied by e to the minus t dt. And it was in 1730 that the mathematician Leonard Euler wrote in a letter to the German mathematician Christian Goldbach that the gamma function is equal to the factorial function. So for instance, if I evaluate gamma when x is equal to 5, this is equal to 5 minus 1 factorial. In other words, it's equal to 4 factorial, which is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And it's out of the gamma function that we find some really surprising results. Namely, that 0 factorial is equal to the value 1. And even more striking is that minus 1 half factorial is equal to the square root of pi. So in this video I'd like to show to you exactly why the gamma function is equal to the factorial function. So if we go down here where we have some more space to work, the gamma function, I'll rewrite it for you, is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 multiplied by e to the minus t dt. So to evaluate this integral we need to use integration by parts. The formula for integration by parts comes from the product rule for derivatives. So if we start with that it's fairly easy to rederive the formula. So if we had the product of two functions p and q and we take their derivative this is equal to the derivative of p times by q plus the derivative of q multiplied by p. So now if we just integrate everything and rewrite the equation, then we have our formula. So notice that the left hand side, this will just simplify to p times q since you're taking the integral of a derivative and you'll just get back the function itself. So if we solve everything for, let's say, this integral, then we can rewrite the formula as the integral of the derivative of p times by the function q, and this is equal to p times q minus this integral here. So the integral of the derivative of q multiplied by p. So this here is our formula for integration by parts and we can apply this to the gamma function. And before we use this formula we need to evaluate gamma when x is equal to x plus 1. So in other words we want to find gamma of x plus 1. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x plus 1 minus 1 which simplifies to just x. So this is t to the x multiplied by e to the minus t dt. So next, we want to set t to the x equal to q in our formula here, since we'll be taking its derivative inside this integral. And we'll set e to the minus t equal to the derivative of the function p. So if we now apply the formula to this integral, the gamma function evaluated at x plus 1 is equal to the product of p times q, so here we have q, which is just t to the x, and then this is multiplied by the function p. Notice here we have the derivative of p, so we need the antiderivative of e to the minus t, which is just minus e to the minus t, and this expression is evaluated between 0 and infinity, and then we'll subtract the integral from 0 to infinity of the derivative of q. So if we take the derivative of t to the x, we get x times t to the x minus 1, and then multiplied by the function p. So again, we need the antiderivative of e to the minus t, which will be negative e to the minus t. And I'll just place the negative outside, making this a plus. 
So this is multiplied by e to the minus t dt. And here we can notice if we take the x value and we factor it out, because in this case it's just a constant since we're taking the integral with respect to t, so if we move the x outside, now we can notice that this integral here is just the gamma function. So the gamma function evaluated at x plus 1 is equal to this expression plus x times the gamma function. So we just need to evaluate this expression here. So if I move over for a little bit of extra space, we want to evaluate this expression. So this expression is minus t to the x divided by e to the t. I just converted this negative exponent to a positive one in the denominator. And this expression is evaluated between 0 and infinity. So to actually compute the expression, we would need to take a limit as some variable b approaches infinity. So this will be equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of this expression minus t to the x over e to the t evaluated between 0 and b. So if we just plug b into this, the limit as b approaches infinity of minus b to the x divided by e to the b, and then we'll subtract this expression evaluated at 0. But if I plug in 0 here, I'll just get 0 in the numerator divided by e to the 0, which is just 1. So this evaluates to just 0. So intuitively, we can see that the denominator is going to grow much, much faster than the numerator as b approaches infinity, since the denominator is in exponential growth. But to prove that this limit approaches 0, we need to apply L'Hopital's rule. And if we apply L'Hopital's rule, x times, then we'll end up with this limit being equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of minus x factorial multiplied by b to the 0 divided by e to the b. And b to the 0 is just equal to 1. So we have some constant in the numerator. It could be very large, since it's a factorial, divided by e to the b. But b is getting larger and larger. It is approaching infinity. So if the numerator is constant and the denominator is approaching infinity, this limit approaches 0. So if we move over, this entire expression here is equal to 0. So what we found is that the gamma function evaluated at x plus 1 is equal to x multiplied by the gamma function. And from this result here, it's quite easy to show that the gamma function is indeed the factorial function. So if I rewrite this result in some free space, so the gamma function evaluated at x plus 1 is equal to x multiplied by the gamma function. So if we set x to be equal to n minus 1, then we'd have gamma of n minus 1 plus 1, which is just gamma of n, is equal to n minus 1 multiplied by gamma of n minus 1. And if we set x equal to n minus 2, then this is equal to gamma of n minus 2 plus 1, which is just gamma of n minus 1, and this is equal to n minus 2 times gamma of n minus 2. And if we continue this and set x is equal to n minus 3, then we'd have gamma of n minus 3 plus 1, which is just n minus 2, and this is equal to n minus 3 multiplied by gamma of n minus 3. So you can see a pattern starting to form where gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 times gamma of n minus 1. 
but gamma of n minus 1 is just n minus 2 times gamma of n minus 2. But gamma of n minus 2 is just n minus 3 times gamma of n minus 3. And you can find from the same argument that gamma of n minus 3 is just n minus 4 times gamma of n minus 4. But gamma of n minus 4 is just n minus 5 times gamma of n minus 5. So you can keep this argument going and going. And what you end up finding is that gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. So remember that this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n minus 1 multiplied by e to the minus t dt. And it's out of this that we get the result that 0 factorial is equal to 1. And in the next video, I will show you how we can prove this.